Bless the Lord, bless the Lord. We give God all the glory and honor this morning. We magnify the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. We praise our risen Savior this morning in the mighty, matchless name of Jesus the Christ, our Savior. Good morning, good morning, beautiful family of Here in Heaven Ministry. I want to greet you all this morning with God's grace, peace, favor, and all his spiritual blessing. A warm welcome as you join. Just prepare your hearts for worship. And also as the ministry progresses today to receive the word of God, we give God all the glory and praise. Good morning, mighty woman of God, Minister Jody. We bless God this morning in the matchless name of Jesus Christ. Just giving the others a little time to join. Glory to God. Bless his name. Hallelujah. Praise his holy name today. We give him praise. Glory to God in the highest this morning. Praise be to the King of glory. We worship the King of glory this morning. We bless the name of Jesus the Christ, our Savior and our soon coming King. Oh, bless the Lord, O oh, my soul, and all that is within me. Bless his holy, mighty, matchless name. Your word, the Lord. Your word, the King. Bless your name, our Father. Bless your name, King of Kings. Bless your name, Lord of Lords. All praise be to God. Hallelujah. Bless the Lord, bless the Lord. We give God all the glory, praise, and honor this morning. We magnify the King of glory. We worship our God, our Lord, our Savior, our Master, our Healer, our Deliverer. Welcome, welcome everyone this morning to our resurrection service it's an honor and a privilege to be here giving god thanks for all his love and kindness and mercy towards us thanking christ for what he did over 2000 years ago we're here to celebrate the risen king we're here to celebrate our savior mighty one the one who never changes the one who love us more than even we can love ourselves today my family as you join let us open in prayers, because this is our custom to do our open prayer in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Welcome, everyone. We give God all the praise today. Bless his holy name. If you join, you can go ahead and be a blessing to someone. Go ahead and share and be a blessing to someone in the mighty name of Jesus Christ, the Son of the living God. Let us open in prayer, my family. Glory be to his name this morning. Hallelujah to the King of kings of and the Lord of Lords, he is worthy and worthy of all our praises. Lord, we thank you. Let us pray. Father, Lord God, we give you all the praise, glory, and honor this morning. We bless you. We glorify you. We magnify the King of kings and Lord of lords, O El Shaddai. We praise your holy name. You are God and God all by yourself. Omnipotent Father, omniscient Father, we welcome you. We welcome your presence, O Spirit of the living God. Lord God Almighty, we want to thank you this morning. Holy Spirit, we want to thank you. Christ, our Savior, healer, we want to thank you in the awesome name of Jesus the Christ, my Father. We greet you this morning and we thank you for the love. We thank you for the love of God this morning. We're in you. Send your only begotten Son to set us free and we are here. We are free. We can lift hands. We can praise him. We can come in fellowship. Glory be to his name in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Glory be to the highest one this morning. 
Hallowed be thy name. Hallowed be thy name. Hallowed be thy name. We say hallelujah to the God of heaven. We say hallelujah to our high priest that is seated at the right hand of our Father, making intercession for us this morning. We bless, uh, praise, and honor, and glorify, and magnify our soon coming King. Yes, he is risen, uh, and he will return on the clouds of the skies, uh, and we anticipate his return uh, in the name of Jesus Christ. We give him thanks this morning. Abba, we thank you, we thank you, we thank you, we thank you, we thank you. We thank you. We thank you. We give you thanks in the mighty matchless name of Jesus the Christ, our Savior. Holy Spirit, we welcome you. We welcome your presence. We welcome your aura. We welcome your essence. We acknowledge your power. We acknowledge your grace. We acknowledge your glory. We acknowledge you, Christ, that you are the reason why we are here today. You are the reason why we don't have to go to look for sacrificial offerings like doves and rams and bulls. You become that ultimate sacrifice for us this morning. You are the reason why we can come boldly to the throne of grace to obtain mercy and blessing and favor and kindness and compassion. We thank you, Christ, for what you did. We know that you are the reason why we are here, and we acknowledge you. We acknowledge you. We acknowledge you. We acknowledge what you did. We acknowledge that you save us. We acknowledge that you deliver us. We acknowledge that you set us free. We acknowledge you, O oh Savior, Redeemer, Holy Spirit of the Living God. We acknowledge your presence. We acknowledge that you are the one that leads, guides, and directs us into all truth. We acknowledge that you are. Are the third person of the Trinity. We acknowledge that when Christ has sent, he left you with us uh, to take care of us, the comforter. We acknowledge you this morning. Oh, glory be to God. We acknowledge the Trinity. We acknowledge the triune God. We acknowledge you this morning in the mighty name of Jesus the Christ, our Savior, and we thank you. We thank you that we are able to come in your presence. We are, we are grateful and we are thankful that we can, oh God, come to you on our own. We don't need a high priest, Lord God, an earthly priest to intercede for us because we have the high priest that is seated at your right hand. We can come boldly to you this morning and we are grateful and we are thankful and we acknowledge your love. We acknowledge your love. We acknowledge your love. We acknowledge your grace. We acknowledge you this morning. And Father, we say thank you. Mighty God, we commit this service before you this morning. We commit the praise and worship. Myself, the mighty woman of God, your daughter, Minister Sandra, as she worship God. Thank you, Lord God, for your presence, the anointing, your power, the anointing that break and lift and destroy. May you pour out upon us this morning. Meet your people needs, oh God. Lord, we thank you today. I commit, oh God, the ministry to you. As I come to minister to your people, thank you, Holy Spirit, for this, your word. Thank you for the revelation. Thank you for the insights. Thank you for showing up this morning. We acknowledge you, Abba. God, we thank you. And Father, I cover every person that will join. Let no one that joined leave the way they joined this morning. And those who will view after, Father, thank you for meeting each and every need. Let your presence be evident as we serve. Let your presence be evident in our own. We give you access today. We cover, Lord God, the algorithms. We cover, Lord God Almighty, this social media page, God. Lord, we bless YouTube this morning. And we thank you that as Christ said, greater things we will do because we have, Lord God, social media where we can, Lord, allow the gospel to reach the ends of the earth. And this morning we are grateful. We are thankful. This morning we bless and glorify and honor you for you, God, is good and your mercy endure forever. Thank you for your mercy this morning. Thank you for your mercy, Abba. Thank you for your mercy, King of Kings. Thank you for your mercy, Lord of Lords. Thank you for your mercy, Adonai. Thank you for your mercy, El Shaddai. Thank you this morning for your grace and mercy. In the matchless name of Jesus the Christ, our Savior, we give God all the glory and honor this morning, for he is worthy 
and worthy of all our praises. Bless you, bless you, my beautiful family. Good morning, one and all. I greet you, intercessors. Good morning, beautiful Minister Sandra. Good morning, Minister Jody. Bless you, bless you, uh, Minister Imabet. Welcome, bless you, one and all. Bless you also, uh, Minister Deandra Kozlisko. Bless you, bless you, Brasia. Those who are on, bless you this morning. Welcome, welcome, welcome in the matchless name of Jesus Christ. If you're here and I didn't call your name because you didn't um, type anything there, but a warm welcome to you as we enter this morning into you know the gates of worship and praise and, and just giving our Father all the glory this morning, lifting up our voice. Just join your beautiful voice and join your hearts uh, and let us worship the King. Let us welcome this mighty woman of God who will usher us in the presence of God this morning in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. A warm welcome to you all, my family. Bless you, mighty woman of God, as we go in worship. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Morning. Good morning. I just want to greet the leader of this ministry, Eagle Evangelist Staley. Good morning. I want to greet Minister Jody in the name of Jesus Christ. Minister Enbet, I greet her. Minister Deandra, I greet her. Oh, Charles Daly, if you're on, I greet in the name of Jesus Christ. Trisha Witter, I greet you. Our YouTube family, I greet you in the name of Jesus Christ. If there is any leader, any first-time visitor, I greet you all in the name of Jesus Christ. Our children of this ministry, our grandchildren, we greet them all in the name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I greet you all in the name of Jesus Christ. Oh, hallelujah. This morning, oh Christ, the Son of God died for us. So this is the reason why we are here this morning. It is a resurrection Sunday. Jesus died for us and he is risen from the dead this morning. And we come to celebrate uh, the goodness of Christ this morning. Yes, yes, Jesus, yes, that's God's son. Uh, we come in the name of Jesus uh, to thank him for our lives, that we are alive this morning. And you know what, we are so blessed. Uh, we have the access uh, that the blessings of his blood uh, and his life and the word uh, and his name and his praise and his power. Oh God, we thank you. Oh God, we worship you. Oh Jesus, yes, man, we're going to celebrate, oh God, Christ this morning. And guess what? We're going to put it in our duty not to wait until Easter we want to celebrate him. We're going to always celebrate Christ as long as we live. Yes, we're going to celebrate uh, the resurrection every living day because he's the one that died on the cross for us. Uh, yes, man, to wash away all our sins. Uh, Oh, God, we are so happy that we are here this morning, that we could celebrate Christ. Oh, my God. Oh, you feel this morning? Yes, we feel so grateful that we could come in the present, oh, God, to celebrate our Christ this morning, like when... Even when we have our birthday, whatever we have, we celebrating. So this is Christ's moment. This is Christ's time for us to celebrate, oh God, our Christ this morning. Hallelujah, Jesus. Yes, man, Jesus died unto her. I am the resurrection and the life this morning. For us to have been planted together in the likeness of his death, we shall be also in the likeness of his resurrection, knowing is the 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 our the, 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 our old man is crucified unto him this morning in the name of Jesus Christ. It's because Christ, the Son of God, died to wipe away our sins that we can declare he is risen. And that certainly he is worthy to celebrate. Hallelujah. 
Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Lord, we thank you, God. Oh, God, we thank you. We thank you this morning, Christ, that you're the one died on the cross for us in the name of Jesus Christ. And we are here to celebrate Christ. We are here to worship Christ. We are here to honor Christ. We are here to look back in the times, oh, God, that he look out for us. Yes, man, he wash away our sinful ways, our sinful life. That what Christ do for us. So we come, oh God, to tell Christ we thank you. Oh, we thank you, Christ. We thank you, Jesus. We thank you this morning uh, that we are alive uh, and we can celebrate, uh, oh God, the goodness, the caring, uh, oh God Almighty of our Christ. Uh, he's the one that watched over us. Uh, he's the one that provides for us. Uh, he's the one that look out for us. Uh, so this morning, we're going to celebrate, uh, oh God, our Christ, uh, the one that died on the cross for us uh, that we are here this morning uh, to celebrate him hallelujah thank you jesus thank you lord holy 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 is the lord god Almighty, who was and his and his to come with all creation, I sing praise to the King of Kings. You are my everything. And I will adore you. Come on, holy, holy, holy is the Lord God Almighty. Hallelujah. Who was and is and he is to come. Thank you, Jesus, hallelujah, with all creation, I sing praise to the King of kings. You are my everything. This morning, Christ is our everything. Uh, he's the holy of the holy this morning. Uh, oh, holy, holy, holy. And we adore him this morning. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Holy. Holy, holy, yes, Christ is holy, 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 holy. Our King is holy, eh? he's a great, almighty. Holy, holy, holy is the Lord God and almighty. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, yeah, oh, death, where is your sting? Oh, hell, where is your victory? Oh, church, come and stand in the light. The glory of God has defeated the night. Hallelujah. Oh, death, where is your sting? Oh, hell, where is your victory? Oh, cry, oh church, come stand in the light. Oh, our God, not dead, is the life. Yes. 
Oh, well, God ain't dead no more. Jesus ain't dead no more. Christ is alive for us this morning. Hallelujah. 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 Come on, church. Say hallelujah. Hallelujah. Christ is the risen. He is alive. Hallelujah. 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 Worship him this morning. Worship the King of Kings. Worship the Lord of Lord. Hey, worship him. Worship Christ this morning. Uh, he's the one that keeping us. Uh, he's the one that watching over us. Uh, worship our King. Uh, worship, oh God. Uh, oh, hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Uh, hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Uh, he is our heavenly Father. Oh, he washed away all our sins. Uh, he washed away our bad behaviors. Uh, he washed away away every living thing uh, that call his name sin. Uh, hallelujah this morning. Uh, he provide food on our table. He provide shoes on our feet. Uh, he provide it this morning. Uh, hallelujah. He guide us. He protect us. Uh, he make a way for us uh, when there is no way. Uh, shout hallelujah. Hallelujah. Christ is risen. Uh, Christ is risen this morning. Uh, he is alive. Uh, he is alive. Uh, he watch over us. Uh, hallelujah. Holy. Holy, 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 holy. Oh, yes. He's holy. Hey. He's holy, 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 holy. Hey. He's holy. Hey, 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 hey. He's holy. Hallelujah. She is holy. He's holy. Hey, yeah. He's holy, he's holy, he's holy, he's holy, he's holy this morning. Hallelujah. He's holy. <laughs> Christ is holy. <laughs> Christ is holy. Yes, he's holy. Holy, 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 holy. Christ is holy. Christ is holy, is holy, is holy. Christ is holy. Hey, yes, is holy. Yes, is holy, is holy. Hey, we are so blessed. <laughs> We are so blessed that we have Christ in our midst. We are so blessed. We have Christ in our life. Oh God, if it was Christ this morning, where we would be? He keep us here. Holy, yes. Oh, he's holy. Hallelujah, Hallelujah. Bless the Lord. Oh, my soul. In all that with a bless you lean in. come on bless the Lord oh my soul and all that within me bless you in it. one more time, bless the Lord, oh my soul, and all that within me, bless his soul, 
hallelujah 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 hey hey hallelujah oh great is our god hallelujah is risen from the dead hallelujah hey hallelujah Fill me up, fill me up, Lord, till it's run over. <laughs> fill me up, God, <laughs> fill me up, God, <laughs> fill me up, God, <laughs> till it's run over. <laughs> Fill me up, God. Fill us up, God. Fill us up, God, with holiness. Fill us up, God, with righteousness. Fill up, us, God, with love. Fill us up, God, with caring. Fill us up, God, with rivers of water. Hallelujah, Hallelujah, Church. Uh, say Hallelujah, 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 Hallelujah. Say Hallelujah, Hallelujah, Hallelujah. Say Hallelujah, 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 Hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Christ risen, Christ risen, Christ risen, Christ risen. Hallelujah. We come to celebrate our King. We come to celebrate our King. He's the one that died on the cross for us. He's the one, oh God Almighty, those nails are pierced through his body. He's the one that drink the vinegar. He's the one, oh God, take up everything uh, for us and his entirely body. He's the one that do it for us. Uh, he's the one. He's the one and holy king. Uh, he's the one almighty God. Uh, Yes, Jesus died on the cross for us. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. When we look at our circumstance, when we look on our situation and see what Christ has done for us, when we look around, oh God, and see where we are coming from and look where we are going. Oh God, Christ, we thank you. Come on. Thank him this morning. Hey, uh, thank him this morning. Hallelujah. Wherever you are, say hallelujah. Wherever you are, thank God. Uh, wherever you are, you thank God. Uh, the job that we have this morning. Uh, the job that we are at this morning. Uh, Christ provided for us. Uh. Oh, yes, he provides us. Uh. He make a way for us when there is no way. Uh. The family that we have, uh, Christ give it unto us. Uh. Yes, Christ take on everything uh, for us. Uh. So we come this in his present uh, to tell him thanks. Uh. Thank Christ this morning. Uh. Come on, church, thank him. Uh. Whatever you're doing, uh, just take a moment uh, and say thank you, Lord. Uh. Say thank you, Christ. Uh. Say Christ this morning, uh, I stood in your present uh, just to celebrate you. Same like I could left and celebrate other things. Uh. This is the moment uh, for us to celebrate Christ. Uh. You think it's easy. Oh God, what he go through. Uh, he stood up for us. Uh. 
he made the way for us. Uh, he do it for us uh, because he loves us uh, and because he cares for us. Uh, that's the reason why he do it. Uh, he watch over us. Uh, he provides for us. Uh, Christ do it for us. Uh, no boy, no girl. Uh, He's the one that do it. Huh? Hallelujah. Shout hallelujah, church. Huh? Say hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. Hallelujah, God. Hallelujah, Christ. Uh, he's a risen one. Uh, he's the one we are celebrating. Uh, yes, he's the one we are celebrating. Uh, oh, hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Uh, he make our life better. He provide for us. Uh, he sent us to college. Uh, he give us education. Uh, yes, he is us. Uh, yes, he make our put it part straight. Uh, he's the one that do it. Uh, by his stripe we are healer. Uh, yes, by Jesus Christ uh, we are healer. Uh, so come on, man. Uh, all of mine and say hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Uh, praise your king this morning. Uh, praise the king this morning. Uh, give him all the attention. Uh, he deserves it. Uh, he deserves it. Uh, if it was one of us going here on the cross, uh, we will give up and could manage. Uh, but Christ managed it. Uh, he do it for us. Uh, Yes, Christ will never fail us. Uh. He will never, never fail us. Uh. Yes, Christ, we thank you. Hallelujah. Oh, God. Uh. Oh, God, we thank you. Jesus, Jesus. Uh. Yes, man, said Jesus, Jesus. I love you, Jesus. Uh. I love you, Jesus. Uh. Jesus, I thank you for looking out for us. Uh. Jesus, I thank you for washing away our sins. Uh. Jesus, I thank you for forgiving us uh, for the many, many things uh, that we do over and 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 over. And over. And you forgive us, God. We thank you, Christ. We thank you for forgiving us for all of our sins. Christ, we thank you for dying on the cross for us. Christ, we thank you for taking us out of danger. Christ, we thank you for keeping us alive. Christ, we thank you for answering all our prayers. Christ, we thank you for interceding for us. Christ, we thank you that you're the one that wake up us this morning. Christ, we thank you that we are not dead. We are alive. Christ, we thank you. Christ, we are celebrating with you. We are celebrating the resurrection of Christ this morning. Hallelujah. Rabbi, <laughs> 
Christ, we adore you. Christ, we adore you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Christ, we adore you. We adore you, Christ. Oh, Christ, we love you. Christ, we love you. Yes, Lord, Christ, we love you. You say, call upon Jesus. You say, call upon your name. You say, call upon your name, and you answer, hallelujah, 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 bless the Lord of my soul and all that within him, bless his holy name, echo no more, she can't even see it, it won't shut up, oh, Yes, we could celebrate Christ. Uh. Yes, we could celebrate Christ. Uh. Stacy and Gordon, uh, don't you happy that you're in the midst uh, this morning to celebrate Christ? Uh. Hallelujah. Yes, oh, we thank God uh, that we could join, oh God, uh, and we could all celebrate Christ. Uh. He's the one that died on the cross for us. Uh. Yes, he's the one allow us to be here. Uh. Yes, he's the one that keep evangelists daily. Oh, she and give her a second chance with us uh, in the name of Jesus Christ. Uh, because the devil take her life uh, and Christ is uh, she is my daughter. The God, we thank you. We thank Christ this morning. We thank Christ this morning uh, because Christ make a difference. Uh, Christ make a difference in our life. Uh, Christ make a difference. Uh, Christ make a difference for us uh, that we could join this morning. Uh, because if either evangelist daily be gone, uh, where will us be? Uh, we maybe be another church uh, and some might may give up, don't find out where they lost. Uh, but Christ make a difference uh, in our life this morning uh, that we are here uh, to celebrate, uh, that we are here uh, to celebrate. Uh, it's crucifixion Sunday. Yes, man. Christ make a difference in our life that we could join this connection and we could be here celebrating. Christ make a difference in our circumstances, in our situation. Christ make a difference in our Christian walk. Christ changed us. Yes, when you read the word, it works us and it changed us. Christ make a difference and put love and put confidence 
Christ make a difference in our life this morning. What about you and I? Christ make a difference. Christ make a difference in me. Christ make a difference. Christ allow the word to be there so we can read the word. Christ make a difference. Christ change us. He make a difference. Come on, man. Look back in your days. Back in the past. Oh, you was so disgusting. So terrible. Love the war, love the fight. And when you find Christ, Christ make a different church. Church, Christ make a difference. Christ make a difference. Come on now, be real. Christ make a difference. Christ will change us. He make a difference. He will take you out of that darkness and put you in that marvelous light. Christ will change your family. Christ make a difference. Christ make a difference. Try Christ. He makes a difference. If you're out there struggling and you're just struggling and struggling, struggling, struggling. Christ makes a difference. He will turn your situation around. Christ makes a difference, church. Christ will change your children. Christ will shift your marriage. When it's ups and down, he will fix it. We just need a patience and wait upon Christ. He's not a man that will lie, nor a man that will repent. He make a difference. Christ make a difference. He make a difference. Christ make a difference. Don't be afraid to celebrate him this morning. He makes a difference. He turns situation around for me. Yes. He makes a difference. It might be hard. It might be tired or it, but come on, church. All on in Christ, he makes a difference. Because he chose to die on the cross for us. He chose to do it for us. That when we sin, when we bad behaviors come upon us, and we say, Christ, forgive us. He did not say, no, I am not forgiving you. He do it for us. Christ do it. He do it this morning. Hallelujah. If it wasn't for Christ, we'll be a bad person. We'll be lost. Never be found for Christ. Makes a difference this morning. We choose uh, to come and worship Him. We choose to come and give Him glory. We choose to come and praise Him. We choose to do it this morning. Christ make a difference. I was so tired. I was so tired. I couldn't get up. I get up so finished to 10, but I was so tired. But I said, listen, I am not quitting this morning. I'm not going to take up my phone and say, Eagle Evangelist Daily, I'm so tired. I think I cannot make it. No, 
I am coming for Christ because Christ do it for us. Because when we're tired, we don't even take up the phone to call our jobs and say we are tired, we make it. So with me this morning, not to show up this morning to come and worship Christ. I have to do it because he will put the strength in me. He will do it for us, church. Say hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Say hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Say thank you, Lord. Lord, we thank you. Say thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Say thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. We thank you. Lord, we thank you. Thank you, Lord. Lord, we worship you. Hallelujah. And Lord, we honor you. Yes. Lord, we thank you, God. God, we thank you. He's risen. We thank you for this moment. Thank you for this time. We thank you for your celebration. Thank you, God. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. Thank you. Bless the Lord, bless the Lord. We give God all the glory this morning. We serve a risen King. Our Savior is risen this morning. And we are here. We are up. We are alive. We live because He lives. I live because my Redeemer lives. Everything that is dead this morning and dormant, we cry out to the resurrected power of Jesus Christ. The same power that raised Christ from the dead this morning. We look to it today to lift us up in the name of Jesus Christ and take us higher in him this morning. May that power that raised Christ from the dead this morning minister to our hearts in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Christ, you arose and because you arose from the dead, because you are risen, I will arise. I will arise and give you praise. I will arise and give you thanks. I will arise also in the name of Jesus Christ, our Savior. We bless the Lord this morning. Come on, somebody, bless him. Come on, church, bless him. Glorify him and magnify him. He lives because you live. Your Redeemer lives this morning. We celebrate our risen King. We celebrate this resurrected Sunday. And as we celebrate the resurrection of Christ, may the resurrected power of Christ infuse us this morning in the name of Jesus Christ. And Lord, I thank you, Lord God, for the resurrected power. You live because, oh God Almighty, you want us to live. You send your son to restore us, oh God. You send your son to redeem us, oh God. And for that this morning, we are grateful and we are thankful. We want to give God all glory and honor this day. We want to bless his holy name. Declare my redeemer live. Ask God this morning that everything that is dormant in your life, may that resurrected power that raised Christ from the dead, bring to life every single thing in your life that is dormant in the name of Jesus Christ. As he says, Lazarus, come forth this morning. We call forth every dead thing in the name of Jesus Christ. Today is the day, Lord God, that you have made. And we, your people, are here to rejoice and be glad in it. We thank you today, Abba, for our daily bread. We thank you, King of Kings. We thank you, Lord of Lords, in the mighty, matchless name of Jesus Christ, our Savior. We bless our risen king this morning bless you bless you my family bless you one and all thank you mighty woman of god for really pouring out your worship and ushering us in the presence of god have yourself a superb sunday and thank you in the name of jesus christ may god continue to bless you and watch over you in jesus name glory be to god my family we bless the lord this morning we give him thanks 
we give him praise. We magnify the King of kings and the Lord of lords, for he alone is worthy and worthy of all our praises. Our risen Savior is worthy. Let us magnify the name of Jesus, our Christ, our Savior. We look to him today. We look to the Alpha. We look to the Omega. Our Abba, we look to you in the awesome name of Jesus Christ. Welcome, welcome, my beautiful family. Let me go back to see if I can just give all of you all a shout out in the mighty name of Jesus the Christ, our Savior and our soon coming King. Good morning, good morning again. Um, ministers, bless you, Minister Jody, Minister Sandra, bless you, bless you once more. Uh, Minister Imebet, bless you also, Minister Deandra, good morning to you. Are there any other leaders in our midst? A warm welcome to you, bless you, and thank you all for coming out this morning. Bless you, Charles, welcome, welcome. Good morning, good morning to you. Uh, Sister Tony, bless you, bless you, Sister Chu and Fletcher. Fletcher, good morning. Bless you. Glory to God. We give God thanks. The fabulous snowflake. Bless you this morning. Audrey Scott, bless you. Happy Easter also. Tracy's family, good morning. Good morning. Bless you. Bless you. Bless you one and all. Stacy and Gordon, bless you. Thank you. Summary 911, good morning. Bless you. Minister Tanisha, lovely Tanisha, bless you. Good morning. In the wonderful name of Jesus Christ, Katie and Melish, good morning to you. Bless you. Bless you, my family. Glory to, to God. It's an honor and a privilege to have you all here this morning. In the awesome name of Jesus the Christ, our Savior and our soon coming King. Uh, this is Joe. Bless God. Bless you, Joe. Praise be to God. I just want to thank God for each and every person that's on. If I did not call your name, I didn't see it here, but a warm welcome and may God bless you and strengthen you. And may this word, you know, mar just marinate you this day and minister to your hearts uh, in the wonderful name of Jesus the Christ, our Savior and our soon coming King. We give God all the glory and all the honor in our midst today. In Jesus' mighty name. Glory to God. We give him thanks. We bless his name. My family, welcome, welcome. Cousin Mwah, morning, morning, bless you, bless you. Praise God. We miss out your name. Praise be to God. Bless you, my family. Thank you all for being here on this Resurrected Sunday. I just want to give God all the glory and praise. I'm elated. I'm excited for what Christ is doing in our midst. Bless the Lord. Glory to God. And we will not delay any further. This morning, the scripture that we will feast upon is taken from Romans 8, 31 to 39. 31 to 39. And let us read, my family. If you have your Bibles. You could follow. Bless the Lord. Wherever your scriptures are on this morning, you can go ahead and follow. I will read from my Bible. Let us dive and delve in the word of God. Glory to God. It says, what then shall we say to all these things? If God is for us, who can successfully, who can success against us? Glory to God. He who did not spare even his own son, but gave him up for us all, how will he not also, along with him, graciously give us all things? Who will bring any charge against God's elect, his chosen ones? It is God who justifies us, declaring us blameless and putting us in right standing, in right relationship with him. Who is the one who condemns us? Christ. Jesus is the one who died to pay our penalty. And more than that, who was raised from the dead and who is at the right hand of God interceding with the Father for us? Who shall ever separate us from the love of God, of Christ? Will tribulation or distress or persecution or famine or nakedness or danger or sword? Just as it is written, and forever remains written. For your sake, we are put to death all day long. We are regarded as sheep 
for slaughter, for the slaughter. Yet in all these things, we are more than conquerors and gain an overwhelming victory to him who loved us so much that he died for us. For I am convinced and continue to be convinced beyond any doubt that neither death nor life nor angels nor principalities nor things present and threatening nor things to come nor powers nor height nor depth nor any other created thing will be able to separate us from the unlimited love of God which is in Christ Jesus our Lord. Thus end the reading of the word of God. Let us give God access in our hearts this morning. Spirit of the living God, I thank you this morning to breathe afresh upon us, your people. May this word enter our hearts, O God, and bring forth, O God, a hundredfold in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. This morning, Holy Spirit, as I decrease, I pray that you will increase in me. I pray, Holy Spirit, that you will give me articulate of speech. I pray for clarity, precision. Lord, I thank you, Lord God, for your spirit, Lord God, of wisdom, your spirit of knowledge, your spirit of revelation, insights, and analogy. Let the spirit of understanding sit upon my tongue, spirit of favor, might, and counsel, spirit of the reverential fear of the living God, pour out this morning. Holy Spirit, have your way in our midst. Thank you, spirit of the living God, for meeting the needs of your people. Let no one that joined leave the way they came, or even those who will view after. I give you thanks this morning. In Jesus' name. We bless his holy name this morning. We glorify the King of Kings and we glorify the Lord of Lords. Holy Spirit, have your way. You are worthy and worthy of all our praises. My family, this morning I will speak to you from the subject, our victory in Christ's unlimited love. Bless the Lord. So we all have victory in Christ's unlimited love. You know, as we celebrate today, um, it's the day, it's the day when, you know, Christ was risen. And, you know, Christians all over celebrate this day of our risen Savior, this resurrected Sunday. You know, many churches uh, in it, globally, they celebrate this day. This day is very significant. It's the anniversary of our risen Savior. Christ paid the ultimate price for you and I to have that victory. So today we are here, you know, celebrating our King. We are here to celebrate the risen King, knowing for a fact that he paid the ultimate price for you and I, knowing for a fact that he is seated at the right hand of our Father, continuously cheering us on, continuously praying for us, and continuously giving us victory. So the road to the cross weren't an easy one, but Christ did it for you and I. He did it for us. His unlimited love for us took him to the cross, wherein he can, you know, he, he can give himself. He gave us himself so that you and I can have life and live it in abundance. And in, you know, and, and, and this is one thing, my family, that regardless of, you know, what the enemy does or regardless of how we might feel, as the woman of God explained that, you know, this morning she weren't feeling well, she was feeling so tired. But despite the way she was feeling, regardless of how she was feeling, she get up. And she came and she gave her best. She gave her best. And, you know, this is what God is saying. Regardless of, you know, what we're going through or regardless of, you know, how we are feeling. Because we have to understand that the enemy, you know, always come to hinder us. The enemy always come to stop us. The enemy, you know, doesn't want us to experience that full love in God. He doesn't want us to experience the fellowship. He doesn't want us to experience, you know, having that good relationship with our Father and with Christ. So he will always come and try to bombard us, you know, prevent you, sabotage you, you know, hinder the word of God. Because he knows that we believe in the word of God. He knows that this is our, you know, blueprint, our forefront. This is what we should live by. And this is what you live by. This is how you try to live your life in God. And because you follow the precepts and follow the principles of God, there are many times that the enemy will come to hinder the belief. He wants to hinder the belief of the believers. Because you are a believer, you believe what God says. But there are times when that's when you know will come into doubt to say, did God say this for real? Or man will say, you know what, I am anti-Christ. 
because I don't believe this. Or man will say, you know, God did not write the Bible. It is man wrote the Bible. But can I encourage someone this morning? The word of God says it was breathed upon. It was breathed upon. God inspired them to give us for instruction, for reproof, for, for correction, how to live that godly moral life in him. So my family, regardless of what the enemy presents to you, whatever opposition you face, be convinced beyond any doubt that this one fact is true, that Christ loves you. This one fact is true, that this word is given to us by Christ Jesus. This one fact is true, that as believers, we have to believe everything that is in the book. We have to believe everything that is in the Bible, because we see when you go through the word of God, this is how we, we know of Christ. This is how we know that Christ died for us. This is how we know that we can have a relationship with Christ. This is what draw us to Christ with the power of the Holy Spirit. So regardless of the opposition, regardless of, you know, how the enemy comes to challenge the word of God, because it's not so much of challenging you, it's to challenge the word so that you don't believe the word and you live double standard and, and, and live in a way where you sway as the word of God says to and fro like a ship out of sea. Because this minute when you know you, you, you see something happen immediately, you say, oh yes, well it's true. And then you will be there another time praying and confessing and reading and praying and confessing and reading. And then it seems like it's not true. But Christ wants you to know that everything that is written in this book is the infallible truth of God. This book, this word is Christ himself. Christ in himself became flesh. The word in itself became flesh and it, it dwelt among men. It came from heaven and it came to earth. So here Christ is saying, you know, he wants you to know that he loves you with an everlasting love. Everything that Christ does, everything that God does is to prove to you that he loves you. So it, regardless of what you might go through, regardless of how the enemy might attack you, and regardless of how the enemy might challenge the word, he wants you to know that not because you are challenged, not because the enemy challenged the word, that doesn't mean that he doesn't love you. So Christ is saying, this is one fact that he wants you to know. And he wants you to understand that regardless of what you go to, be convinced beyond any doubt that this one fact is true. Christ's unlimited love never runs out. Christ's love gave. So he gave his life so that you can have life in him. So Christ gave up his life. They did not take it from him. The word of God says he gave up the ghost of and not just to, to live. Not, he didn't give his life not just for you to live, but also to live in his abundance. He wants you to live more than in more than you can possibly live. He wants you to live in more than you possibly need. So not to and to mouth, not to say, oh, I only have a meal for this morning and I don't have a meal for today or I don't have, you know, anything then we put it to material things not to say i don't have anything not to say i i don't have anywhere to live not to say i don't have anything to wear not to say i don't have anything to eat but he wants you to know that you can live in your possible means of living in abundance more than you need more than everything that you need in life. So you can have breakfast, lunch, and dinner. You can have three meals uh, uh, per day. You can have five meals per day. You can wear as much as you want, as much as you want, because people limit God. And God wants us to come out of that limitation, come out of that box of limitation, and look at him grand, look at him big, look at him huge. He created this whole universe. He created the world and all of us, the earth and all of us who live in this earth. When you travel, if you look, you know, on, on, on a global, you look, you know, on that, on, on that global map and you can see as far as you can spin it and look and see, you will see that it doesn't stop. It goes on and on and on. If you are someone that loves to travel, you can see, you know, it's big, it's wide, it's vast. There's so many places that we haven't seen yet or haven't touched yet. We don't even hear of them. We didn't have heard of them before. Sometimes when you hear some name of some place, you have to wonder if somewhere near him so. So God is saying, too long we have been putting in, you know, his love in a box. We have been putting him in, in a box. And now we have to understand that his love is grand. His love is wide. His love is vast. He love you. Christ love you. And he wants you to know this morning that it doesn't matter if your body is in pain. 
He loves you. He already paid the price for that pain. So if the enemy wants to come and put pain on your body, stand up and know that you have power over that pain. And not because your body says it is in pain, you're going to believe the pain, that you, the reality of the pain than what Christ says. And there are times when if we don't go in situations, we can know Christ for who he said he is. Because if you don't have pain, you will never know that you can have a healer. If you, don't, if you don't need provision, you will never know that you will have a provider. So Christ answered the desire of his father when he came in this world. And when we look in the book of Hebrews, Hebrews 10, 5 explains it clearly, my family. It says, therefore, when he comes in the world, he said, sacrifice and offering thou hast not desired, but a body thou hast prepared for me. So God wanted to get rid of all, you know, the old pattern, the different kinds of sacrifices and offering, because the word of God has to fulfill. The word of God must fulfill. And if the prophecy came that Christ is going to come and give us a new heaven and a new earth, God has to prepare a body for Christ to come to redeem his people so that we can have this new heaven and this new earth. So here Christ was saying when he came from heaven to earth, he said, you no longer need sacrifices. You no longer need offerings. You no longer need bulls and rams and, and doves and all these things for your people, you know, to come. And for them, you no longer need the priest behind the veil. You need a high priest that can sit beside you. So he says, you no longer need those things. You want to do away with those things. So God in his, in his intent wanted to do away with the old and bring in the new so that you and I can live in that newness, so that you and I can live in that new life. So here Christ says, you didn't want, no more you wanted sacrifice, no more you wanted offering, but now you prepared a body for me where I, your son, can be that ultimate sacrifice, where I, your son, can come and reconcile your children to you. So God wanted to get rid of those things. So Christ had was to become that ultimate sacrifice and offering once and for all so that you and I can come into that relationship. You and I can come into that fellowship with our father. So here Christ says, I did it so that you no longer have to go and look for bulls and rams and, and doves and, and pigeons and all of that. I now become that sacrifice. I now become that, that high priest wherein you don't have to go look for the priest or tie string around the priest and put him behind the veil to seek God anymore. I wanted you to have that relationship. What Adam forfeited, I now come that you can come into God's presence. I now come that you can now have this relationship with your father so no more god wanted us to go and look for any rams and bull so he had prepared a body so that christ come now and could able to carry out the manifestation of the uh, the will of the father so there you see when the angel appeared to mary mary already know uh, the angel already knew what god wanted so all is up to mary now to say okay beat unto me and we saw where mary said beat unto me because God could have sent his spirit alone down here because his spirit is here. But he wanted to know, to us to know how to live. He wanted us to know how to love. He wanted us to know that he, he, he loves us in our own human faults and frail and everything. So he wanted his son to come to demonstrate to us everything that he wanted from you and I. So my family... Christ had became that ultimate sacrifice and that offering once and for all so that you can experience true fellowship and have that personal relationship with your father. He was doing away with the old and stepping in, in the new. So no longer you have to look to the old, but now you look to the new. You look to the new heaven. You look to the new earth as he spoke in Revelation. He was doing away with the outward thing because so much outward thing. He says, you know, no more rending of, of, of the garment. No more tearing up the clothes. No more putting ashes on the head to say, oh, I have sinned and I need your forgiveness. No more the outward thing because so much man pretends man can pretend man can put anything on the outward man can show because you know other people looking you can dress up you can look beautiful but deep under all this clothes and everything the body can full of sore 
So you can put on a facade as much as you want. So God wants us to do away with the facade. God wants to do away with the show, with the open show to render, you know, the garment. But God was, in, was saying, no, render heart. I want to deal with the heart of man because too much of the outward caused the heart to be hard and callous. Are you with me, somebody? So too much of the outward of the man, too much of showing the outward thing, cause the heart of man not to really in it. Because you know you can always come and put this down, and your heart not even in it. You put it down sometime, and you don't even know where it is. So God was saying, no more of the outward show, no more of the rending of the outward. I need the mankind now to be touched, you know, on the inside. I need them to understand that I am touched with their infirmity. I need them to feel that love. I need them to have that relationship. I need them to have that one-on-one. -on -one. I need them to have that love, knowing that my next you know, step with them is love me. Have no other God but me. And love your neighbors as yourself. So God wanted, wanted us to experience true love. He wanted us to know what is love. Because many times, many persons, they just don't know love. They don't understand how to love. I remember when I just gave my life to God. I used to say, God, I don't even know if I love you for real. I want to say I love you, and I mean that in my heart. I want to say I love you, and it connects. I can feel it from the inner man. I can feel it from the depths to say I sincerely love you. So this is where God wants to take his people. So God did not just want us to do that outward thing, you know, rending the garment. But God wants us to have that reverence in our heart, that reverence, that love, that, that respect, that honor. He wanted to prepare the heart of man to have that true love, to have no other God beside him, and to love our neighbors as ourselves, as I said before. Removing the heart of stone, as he told Ezekiel, and replacing it with the heart of flesh. So God wanted us to experience the heart of flesh. He wants us to have compassion. He wants us to have love. He wants us to know that when we have sinned and, 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 and have done anything, we truly have that heart to really sorry. Having that contrite heart to say, yes, I have sinned. And I know that what I have done is wrong. And, and I feel convicted. I no more just come with a show and put out these things and tear my clothes and put on ashes on my head to make a show. Because we see even in Nineveh, when Jonah went to Nineveh, the king put on a show. The king ripped in clothes and took off in royal robe and threw things on his head. But they went back to the same thing. But God wanted to meet the heart of man. That means when your heart really convicted, you will turn. Because conviction brings conversion. And it will bring that true love, that true compassion. The heart that can touch with others. The heart that can love somebody else. The heart can really truly sorry for what I have done. So God was saying, I want to put away with the old, my son. I want to reconcile them to my love. I want them to be touched. I want them to know how to love. I want them to know how to have compassion. And I want them to learn, most of all, how to honor and reverence me. That art that can make it be soft and pliable, where I can speak to them and they can understand. Not go ahead and, and rebel after I speak to them. Because we see the Israelites, that's how they live. God spoke to them, oh yes, 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 God, I'm going to hear today, and by tomorrow, they rebel. So God wanted us not to be in that rebellious state anymore. He wanted our hearts to be in that place where we can say, I love you, and I truly love you. He wanted that heart to become soft and pliable and invite everyone to have the opportunity. He invited everyone to have the opportunity to experience his presence personally so after god gave us this heart when christ came we saw when christ went on the cross we saw he took on everything as the word of god says he gave us the opportunity right now to experience the mission was to give us the opportunity to experience the love of a father and to experience and for us to really truly love him and to experience his presence his spirit, because Joel the prophet, the prophet had already prophesied in Joel 2.28 that in the last days, he's going to pour out his spirit upon all flesh. So we are in no more. The spirit will just come and sit upon certain men. 
or the spirit will just come and sit upon the priest. He will pour out his spirit upon all flesh because he wants all flesh to experience his holy presence. And we see the manifestation after Christ ascended on the day of Pentecost. We see the manifestation where all God's people, 3,000 and more were added to the church. One day the church built over 3,000 and more people because the spirit of the Lord, God invited himself. God came in and sat upon them and gave them the evidence where they can speak in unknown language and speak to angels. Oh my God. So no more God wanted us to live, you know, the basic. God wants us now to experience the supernatural because he is a supernatural God. So no more God wants you to live in the basic or live in, in, in the mediocre or live in the norm. God is saying, come up. God is saying there's greater, there's higher, there's more in my love. We see when Christ gave up the ghost, when he was on the cross and he gave up the ghost, the word of God said the veil ripped from top to bottom. Dear and dead, we see now where the, when the veil ripped, we see now where the presence of God, the presence of God now come out from behind the veil. So we no more need a priest. We don't know, need a priest to go behind the veil for us. God's presence is made available. We know of the high priest Christ himself that now make intercession with the Father for you and I. So we don't have to go to no priest behind no window or we don't have to go to no priest anywhere. Yes, we can come and come together and intercede and pray, but we pray to the Son and the Father and he takes it to the Father. We don't need anyone to sit down and, and have to go to the Father and we shut up our mouth and wait. We can now come in agreement. We can now come in agreement. We have the high priest, my family, who is seated at the right hand of our Father, interceding daily. We now have rights, we now have privilege to come boldly to the throne of grace. We all have that privilege, not just the priests in the church, not just the pastors, not just the bishop, not just the leader, not just those, the evangelists, not just the preachers or the teachers. We all, we all are invited to come boldly to the throne of grace. So even though Christ had was to go through shame and pain, he did it anyway for you and I. And through his death, burial, and resurrection, as recorded in the Gospels, we can now live in victory over every opposition of the enemy. Somebody give God praise this day. You can live in victory over every opposition of the enemy because he told us in Isaiah that no weapon formed against us will be able to prosper. And every evil edict, every evil tongue that rises against you, you have the power to condemn it. His, his love. Christ's love paved the way for you and I, my family. Even when it seems unbearable, when the human side of him wanted to be in conflict with his father's will, because we see the human side of Christ wanted to be in conflict with his father's will. And he cried out to the father. He did not withhold the suffering. When he cried out to the father, the father did not say, okay, my son, I see that you cannot bear it anymore. I see that it's too much for you. Okay, I'm going to stop all of this. No, the father didn't. It's like you have your own child. And sometimes they have, you see the potential in them. You know that they can do it. And in spite of the pain, in spite of the, 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 the trauma, in spite of what you're going through, they might be in a race running and then drop and dig out the knee and chip up the knee. And they want to stop. But you hold the hand and you say, come on, you got to finish this. And you keep holding them and they keep hopping until they reach to the end. So we see where God did not say to the son, the father did not say to the son, though his, 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 his human side wanted was to come in conflict with the will of the father. He did not say, okay, stop. He did not say stop. No matter how that child is saying, I can't. No matter how the child is telling you, I can't. You are going to ignore the plea. And encourage the strength that's within. So that's what the father did. The father did not ignore the son. But he ignored the plea. 
and encouraged the strength that was within him. The father did not desert his son's plea. When he cried out at that nine hour, Eli, Eli, Lama Sabashtani, which means, my God, my God, why hast thou forsaken me? The father did not forsake him. When he says, why have you forsaken me? He only encourages the strength that's within. He ignores the can't and encourage I can or you can. So there are a lot of times when we go through all kinds of things. There are a lot of times we face things, my family. Many times we face things and many times we are before God. And we are crying out and we are crying out and we are crying out. God, have mercy on me. God, help me. God, you don't see me. Where is the God of Israel, Isaac and Jacob? Where is the God who promised this? Where is the God who promised that? He's telling you the same thing. I have not ignored your cry. I am just encouraging the strength that is within. Because if I come to every plea and if I come to every cry, if I spoil you, it's like you have your child. That's why the word of God says, do not spear the rod and spoil the child. Because when you spoil the child, when you spoil your children, they end up come to nothing. They have so much inside of them. They can do so much, so much potential, unlimited potential that God has deposited on the inside of them. But when you spoil them and every little cry, every little thing you say, here, here, here. Or every little thing you say, no, no, come, come, come. Hush, hush, hush. No. God wants us to encourage the strength in them as he wants to encourage the strength in us. God says he creates us to be bold and confident and robust. So therefore, he will not come to every plea and every cry as we cry. Our flesh, our human side will not conflict the will of God. Because we see where the Holy Spirit, the word of God tells us that these two are always in conflict with each other. The human side wants to have his way and the spirit of God wants to have his way. But what are we going to do? Are you going to allow the spirit of God to have his way? So Christ did. Many times, my family, so is it with us. You believe that, you know, God ignores you by not spoiling you and jumping to your every plea. He wants to show you what he has put on the inside of you. There is strength in you. God says there is strength in you. So do not feel as though I, I, I am ignoring you. Do not feel as though that I am not listening to your prayer. God has put strength, he has put courage, he has put boldness, confidence within. How is it that you are going to know that I am strong and bold and courageous and full of confidence? There is no way that you are going to know that you are strong and bold and full of confidence if he spoil you and run to your every plea. So God is saying, so as I allow my son to bear all of that, there are times when you in your own self have to bear it to know that you can come and sit in the place of honor with me. Knowing without a shadow of a doubt that you did it. God, what God has placed on the inside of you, you have overcome it. When you face adversity, sometimes it can bring you in that vulnerable position. And God wants you to know that you can also have confidence in his love. Knowing that the outcome will bring victory no matter what you face. Because there are many times we get vulnerable. Many times we, 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 we succumb to the thing. Many times we, we, we act as if, oh God, because they're not hearing me. And God, because they can't help me. Guess what? I am not moving any further. I am not doing anything. I am not praying. I am not reading the word. I am not doing all these things. I have been there speaking from experience. Because I live. I live it. So I can speak it. There are times when I come in my spoil mode. Oh God, you can do it. Oh God, you can this. Oh God, you can that. And then I'm, I'm not praying. But God wants us to know that it's not about spoiling us. Because when he spoils you, now you're in conflict with the will. Now he's, giving the he's gratifying the flesh and not the spirit. We all have to come to him in spirit and in truth. So the spirit to, 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 it's a spirit to spirit. And father to child. We have to understand that we come in the spirit with father and the, and the child. And God wants you to know that you can always have confidence in his love. 
God says you can always have confidence in his love, knowing that whatever you face, whatever you go through, the outcome is victory. Here we read in the word that says, who can, who shall ever separate us from the love of God? Who can separate you from that love? He says, what then shall we say to all these things? If God is for us, who can successfully, who can successful against us? Who can stand against you? Who can triumph over you? Who can stop you? Because God is for you. So therefore, no one can stop you. These things that we go through, my family, are not to separate us from him. It's to draw us closer to him. When Christ was going through the pain, it was not to separate him from his father. It was to bring him closer to the seat of honor. Where is he seated now at the right hand of his father interceding for you and I daily? So it doesn't matter what you're going through or what lies Satan wants to tell you, the father of lies. The father does not want your father in heaven does not want to separate from you. He doesn't want you to separate from him. Neither does his son that went through all the pain and shame and died, buried, and resurrected wants to separate his love from you. There is no separation. That's the mistake that Adam made in the beginning. Thought that because he sinned and because he disobeyed, God wanted was to separate from him. God wanted nothing to do with him. So he went and hide. And the law came. And man broke the law just the same. But Christ came to show us that there is love in God. There is forgiveness in God. There is mercy in him. There is kindness in him. He's long suffering. You can have joy. You can have peace. You can be patient. To hear Christ is saying to you and I, my family, that it doesn't matter what you go through in life. It doesn't matter how the thing end up. It's not where you start. It's where you end with God and how you end with him. So God is saying, he doesn't want to separate. Christ is telling you that he didn't went through all the shame and pain and dead, bury and, and resurrect for you to separate from him. He wants to be in close proxy to you, building your relationship with him, getting to know him personally, getting to know the father as Abba, your supplier. There is nothing on the face of the earth that can separate a believer from the love of Christ. Christ went through all he went through to redeem us to the, our heavenly father so that we can enjoy his full love here on earth. Christ wanted to enjoy the full love of God. Why are you running from the love of your father? Why are you running from the love of God? God is saying, don't run from me, run to me. It doesn't matter the mistakes that you have made. Your sins, when you come to me, I place your sins as far as from the east is from the west. Christ took on all those sins so that you can come to me and be redeemed and be loved. You can run to my loving arms knowing that I love you with an everlasting love. And this love never fails or never changes. So that is what God is saying to you today. There is no need that you will run from him. To his love we gain access. To his love, we gain access to the throne of grace to obtain mercy, forgiveness, and blessing in time of need. So Christ gave his life for you to see that he loves you. If you love someone here on earth, you will give up anything for that person. When you truly love someone, you truly love your kid, you truly love your children, you will give them everything and anything. As I said, you might reach in the place where you spoil them because you have it all. You, ha you, you can lavish them. You can give them all the, the abundance that they need, everything that they need and more. They can waste it. They can give it away. They can spend it. They can do anything because you love them. And everything that you own belongs to them. So picture yourself and your father 
He says, if you who know evil, know how to give your, your children good gifts, much less your heavenly father who is in heaven. So he wants you to know that Christ gave his life for you so that you can come in that relationship with him, so that you can come in that love relationship with him, not being distant, not wondering, oh, he's going to whip me for everything. Believing that you have a one over your head and as you slip up and make a mistake, you get a lick. That's not God. He's long-suffering and merciful and kind. So through his love, we gain access to the throne. We can come to him. We can cry, Abba. We can sob. We can mourn. We can sit at his feet. We can be penitent. We can honor him. We can praise him. We can worship him. You can do all we want. David dance and give him undignified praise. You can give him a dignified praise if you want. You can go or strip yourself naked in your house. In your house and dance and gallivant and chew up your clothes and say, God, this is my praise. However you choose to praise him. You can lie on the floor and you can cry from night till morning as long as you are giving him worship. That's how God wants to connect with us. You can laugh with him. You can dance with him. You can do anything with him because it's a father to a child. Just as you have your own father and you celebrate with them and they celebrate with you. So God wants to celebrate with you. And sometimes when we don't grow with that father figure, you know, we don't tend to know how to love. It. We don't tend to know that love of a father. And sometimes we believe that God is treating us like our earthly father. He rejected us and God leave us, don't remember us. So God is doing the same. No, God is not doing the same. God wants you to know that his love for you will never change. His, his love for you will never change. There is nothing that we need that we will not receive through the ultimate love of Christ Jesus. So I reiterate it. There is nothing that you need that you will not receive through the ultimate love of Christ Jesus. Everything that the believer experience here on earth is to take us one step closer to the father everything so whether good or bad my family everything that the believer go through is to take us closer i have learned this personally i have learned it personally my my family that if i i didn't have need if there wasn't a need, if I didn't have a need, how would I know that I have a provider? The day when the enemy came to take my life, if I didn't have Christ interceding on my behalf and the Holy Spirit and the whole heaven army, I wouldn't be here today. I heard the woman of God spoke about it while we were in worship. I wouldn't be here today. If I didn't sick, if I, if I didn't ever get sick, I wouldn't know that Christ is a healer. So sometimes the things that we go through, we can't get so uptight and say, God don't love me, and God hit me, and God not helping me. Just as it draw Christ closer, just as the pain, the shame, the suffering, the mockery, the strip naked, the spat upon, the thorns of crowns on his head, just as though he was ridiculed. His enemies desert, his friends desert him. They're really my enemies. His friends desert him, turn their back on him, betrayed him. But he stick it out. He stand the test. And as a result, no matter the tribulation, the persecution, nothing, that could never separate him from the love of his father. He had the love of his father backing him. And everything that the believer experiences here is to get us closer to the Father. He wants us to know that it's to get us closer to him, my family. So if you don't have a problem, you don't know that Christ can solve that problem. Are you with me, someone? Our needs help us to know him more. Our needs help us to draw us closer. Do not allow your needs to push you away from him. He wants you to know that don't allow your needs to push you away from him. Your needs is to let you know who he is, to know his character, and to experience his love. 
Christ makes sure that from the day he left earth and went back to sit at the Father's right hand, he never stopped interceding for you. His love pays for you and I. Even when we think we don't deserve it, it's not up to us. He did not leave it to us. It's up to him to show us otherwise and prove us wrong. Many times when we are there mourning, sobbing, and want God to spoil us. And sometimes we turn our own backs, not being faithful, but he is being faithful. So even when you're not faithful, he's still faithful. Even when you hate him, the haters hate him, he still loves them. The father did not deny the son of his love. As we see, the son, the love of the father, exemplified through the son. When he cried out, he showed the son the full potential that's on the inside of him. You can accomplish, son. I can just imagine, just paraphrasing. God was there cheering him on. You can do it, son. There's nothing too hard or wonderful that you cannot do. You are the word. Remember, son, the possibilities are within your power to accomplish this. And so is it with us. God is saying the possibility is in your power. You can accomplish this. You can do it. It is in you to do the exceedingly abundantly far above than you can even think, ask, dream, or imagine. There's nothing on the face of the earth that you make up your mind to do that you cannot do. Some of us tell ourselves, oh, by next week, I'm going to do this. Or by next week, say, for instance, you know what? By the end of the year, I'm going to write five books. By the end of the year, I'm going to purchase a home. But you begin to work towards those goals. You don't just say them out of your mouth and leave them. Success don't come with what you say. Success come with what you do, how you work towards it. What you work, what you do. That's the only way you can achieve it. Not by just saying it. You say it out there, but you work towards it. There is nothing that you cannot do that you put your mind to do that you will not do. And where does that come from? It has to come from within you. It did not fly out of the ear. It's the determination that is in your heart. It's the determination that is in your spirit that caused you to work towards your goals. So God knows what is inside of you. So there's nothing on the face of the earth that you bend your mind to do that you cannot do. So this is what the father was saying. You can do it. You know how to do it. You have to set the examples of how it's to be done. So there's nothing that you want to do on the face of the earth that you will not achieve, accomplish, or, 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 or accumulate. It is within you. And as the word said, greater is he that's within you than he that is within the world. The greater one lives on the inside of you. The greatest power is within you, my family. Christ himself. The day when you confess Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior and ask him to come into your heart, he is in there. He resides there. He dwells in there. He lives in there. And he causes you to do the exceedingly abundantly far above than you can even think, dream, or imagine. So God is saying, get with it. You can do it. Get with it. You can do it. Christ's love gave you that power and authority to perform, to accomplish, and to achieve. Through his love, you can make it. Through the Father's love, Christ made it. And you now have his love to make it. You can make it. The Bible explained that God the Father did not fear his son. We read it here. He did not fear his son. He did not spoil him in other words. He did not say, oh, come down, come down, come down. I'm going to take you down. That's okay, my son. And pat him on the head and say, all is well. When he cried out on the cross and say, okay, stop all of this. Stop it. My son is in pain. He allowed him to become that sacrificial lamb for you and I. The love that he wanted to display to all humanity, not just one son, not just you alone. I want to show them that I love them all. 
So my son, you can do it. My daughter, you can do it. You can do it for your brothers. You can do it for your sisters, God says. Give them the example of how a father, a brother loves. Lay down his own life for them. So we see where Christ love laid down his life for you and I. And the father is saying, this is the example that Christ set to show us that it doesn't matter what we go through or how we set out, set or what we set our minds to do. We cannot turn back. We cannot draw back. We have his power. We have his grace. That's the mission. The ultimate goal that Christ came to show, to demonstrate, to do for you and I. That I can lay my life down. I can give my life as a sacrifice. So though it pains, though it hurt, though I'm going to de- die, though they're going to kill me, though I'm going to be buried, though I'm going to, I know I'm going to resurrect, but still the pain, the agony, The hurt. I am still human. I am in that form. I am in human form. So I can still feel pain. The flesh can still feel pain. But he did it for you and I. That's the mission. That's the ultimate goal. So I won't draw back now. So the father was saying, you can do it. Don't draw back now. Go ahead. Do it. As the word says, it takes no pleasure in those who draw back. So God is saying, whatever it is that you make up your mind to do in this season, know that his love is backing you. Know that Christ already paid the price for you to move forward. Christ has already went ahead of you and clear all the crooked areas and make that straight path before you. His love is behind you a hundred percent. So you don't have to shrink, you don't have to draw back because it takes no pleasure in those who draw back. Because if Christ had draw back, the father wouldn't take any pleasure in him. He had was to finish it. He had was to finish it. So immediately, Christ recognized and understood the love of his father, his human desire that was that wanted was to get in conflict with the father's will. He says, no, 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 nevertheless. He says, but nevertheless, yet, not my will, but yours be done. So the human side of him wanted to get in conflict with the will of the father. Immediately, he says, wait, what am I doing? Not my will, father, but yours be done. And the word of, of God says, When the father heard this, he said, angels, go and strengthen him. When Christ realized, wait, why am, I, why am I doing this? He says, nevertheless, it's not my will, but your will be done. So nevertheless, the human side of me, nevertheless, what I'm going to right now, this is not why I come here to draw back. This is not why I come here to shrink back. This is not why I come here to cry out to you. I came here to accomplish the journey, to finish the mission. So don't pay my cries any mind right now. I'm going to accomplish the journey. Not my will, but your will. And God sent him angels to strengthen him. So God is saying, you might be going through pain. Right now you might feel ashamed. Right now you might feel like God has deserted me. I have nothing. I don't know where to go. I don't know what to do. I don't know my next move. I am confused. I don't know the next step. He says, trust his love. His love will take you there. His love wants to take you there. God wants his love to take you there. Elebushki barabaski bondai. So angels came and ministered to Christ and Christ's love will strengthen you through your journey. The love that Christ received on the cross, the strength that Christ received to accomplish the journey because he was almost there. Maybe in the middle or near to the end, but he was almost there. And the agony and the pain 
But he said, nevertheless, not my will, but your will be done. And he's saying, as you hold on headstrong, as you continue the mission, as you continue the journey, it might seem hard, it might seem rough, it might seem tough. Your Christian life might seem like it's a joke. Your Christian life might seem like we had no result. Every day I get up, it's the same thing, it's the same thing. I get angry, I get frustrated. You get all of this guy, you're saying, God, what is this? God is saying, keep going. I will strengthen you. Christ is saying, I'm praying for you. I'm interceding for you. Keep going. The same way while he was in the flesh, angels came and ministered to him. He will admonish them to do the same for you. Trust me on that. Because the word of God says they are ministering spirits. Aren't they ministering spirits? They will minister to you. Same way all the angels minister to Christ. They will minister strength to you. So God is saying, if you need strength, if you need strength, don't turn him, don't, 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 don't push him away. Don't turn your eyes away from him. Continue to look to him. He will strengthen you. Christ came to display the ultimate love of the father to his children. Allowing us to know that the same way how God dealt with him in the flesh is the same way that the Lord, the God of heaven, will deal with you. What he had done for one, he will do it for all. He's no respecter of person. Christ knew no sin, but he became and he took it on for you and I. Christ became poor so that you and I can become rich. Rich in his love, rich in his mercy, rich in his glory, rich financially, wealthy. You name however rich you want to be. Christ became poor so that you can become rich. He took on all your infirmity, your sickness, everything, your disease, everything. If Christ came and he made it in the human side, he made it in his flesh, we can more than make it as humans. You were built for it. God has chose you. You did not choose yourself. Christ died for you. You did not die for yourself. He died for you by paying your sinful penalty. The punishment that you deserve by breaking the law, the Ten Commandments. And in exchange, in exchange, you don't have to go and look for no bulls and doves and rams and all of that. In exchange, you have received that grace and more grace. In exchange for all that you have done, he has given you grace and more grace where you can say, okay, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Have mercy, have mercy, have mercy, have mercy. As many times as you want, 70 times 70 will forgive you. And you should forgive also. You won't be stoned. You won't be stoned to death and you won't be condemned. The law was given by Moses, but grace and truth came by Christ Jesus. When God sent his son into the world, it's not to condemn the world, but the world to be saved through him, to rescue them, to heal the world, and to make us all whole again, replacing the stony cold heart to a heart of flesh, allowing us to experience his presence personally, giving us his fullness, the fullness of his abundance, love and grace, of his abundance, grace and truth. We have all received his grace upon grace, that spiritual blessing upon spiritual blessing, his favor upon favor and gifts, heap upon gifts. Christ is forever interceding at the right hand of the Father. Christ is forever interceding at the right hand of our Father, making sure you abide in his abundant grace. His grace and love can never, ever, his grace and love can never, ever run out. There is nothing that exists or does not exist that can separate us from the unlimited love of God. There's nothing that exists on the face of this earth or does not exist because here the word of God explained it to you. Nothing, for I am convinced and continue to be convinced beyond any doubt, neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor principality, nor things present or threatening, nor things to come, nor powers, nor height, nor depth, 
nor any other created thing will be able to separate you from the unlimited love of God. So there's nothing, my family, there's nothing on the face of the earth can separate you from the love of the Father. We have victory over every opposition of the enemy through Christ's unlimited love. Be convinced and continue to be convinced until eternity, until the end of your life, the end of ages. You will not, nothing will be able to separate you from God's love, from his shalom love, from his, from his, from his, his, his unlimited love, his shalom glory. Nothing, nothing that's on the face of the earth, nor under the earth, nor in the heavens, principality, powers, rulers of darkness, you name it. There is nothing, nothing whatsoever. So God is saying to you today, do not allow yourself to believe that you are separated from him. There is no separation anymore. The veil has been ripped. And now his presence is made available for all of us. His spirit is made available for you and I. He's pouring out his spirit upon you that you can dream dreams, have visions, bringing forth manifestation, giving you wisdom, knowledge, understanding, teaching you the know-hows, the wins, the whys, guiding you every step of the way, causing you to bind and to loose. When Christ went in the heart of the earth and came back, he gave you that, that power. He gave you the power through his love. You gain power through the love of Christ. When he went in the heart of the earth, he did not just lie in a grave as a carcass. He went in and he took back the keys that Satan took from Adam. So you were, you were tenant. After you were a landlord, you fall to tenant. But no, you don't run around your yard anymore. You run your yard. Because you have the keys. So demon not supposed, you don't supposed to allow no demon to chase your mentally, physically, nor spiritually. You chase demons. You chase them because you have the power to chase them. Christ's love will back you in everything that you're doing. Once you are a believer and you're coming to Christ and you're coming to Christ Jesus, know that his love will back you. You have victory through the love of Christ Jesus. So no weapon, no weapon that is formed against you, no weapon at all will be able to prosper. And every evil tongue that rises against you, this is your heritage. Be convinced. Beyond every shadow of a doubt, be persuasive and be persuaded that this is what my God says. And I will never, ever believe otherwise. His love is vast. His love is wide. His arms are open for you today. And if you're on this live and you haven't received Christ as your Lord and Savior, he's saying, I have paid the ultimate price. All I need to do all I need you to do is to come into that relationship with me. Christ wants to meet you. You might seem like you're at the end of the road. It's the best place to meet him at the end of the road. He will restore you. So today, if you're here and you're listening, and you haven't received Christ as your Lord and Savior, Believe in his, in his love, trusting in his love, knowing that he's the one that died for you. He is the one that they buried and he's the one that resurrected as we're here today, you know, having the anniversary and celebrating our risen savior. His resurrected power is on the inside of you. And if you haven't received him, you can get that resurrected power on the inside of you. All you have to do is ask him to come into your heart and be your Lord and savior. And by you confessing and believing that he is in your heart and that same power that raised him from the dead is now invested inside of you. It rests, it dwells, and it abides. And every dead thing that is in you we must come to life because that's resurrected power. That resurrected power 
lives on the inside of you, causing you to do the exceedingly abundantly far above than you can even ask, think, or imagine. And if you're such a one, and you want that resurrected power in you, where you can stand and declare boldly that Jesus is Lord, you can lift him high, declare him in the face of your enemy, and knowing that his love will protect you, you can repeat after me. Say, Jesus Christ, I repent of my sins. Forgive me and come into my heart. I want to make you my Lord and Savior. I now confess with my mouth. And I believe in my heart that I am saved. And if you just say this prayer, get in a good Bible-based church and get baptized. And as I always say, don't just add him, submit to him. Father God, I thank you for your people this day, God. Lord, I thank you for those who have received you as their Lord and Savior. Lord, I thank you, Lord God Almighty, that as you welcome them in your loving arms and your loving kingdom, they will experience your resurrected power. God, I thank you today for your only begotten son that you have sent to set us free. Thank you, God, that you, O oh Father, thought about us and wanted us to be in that relationship with you. And I thank you that your son came in obedience to your love. Father, we thank you today. May that resurrected power bring to life today, God, every dead, every dormant thing that's in your people's life. Lord, we pray that the resurrected power will meet your people finances. I pray the resurrected power will meet their health. I pray the resurrected power today in the name of Jesus Christ will meet their family, their relationship. Lord God, everything that seems like, oh God, there is no hope. There is no hope, no headway. I call upon the resurrected power of Jesus Christ to meet it today. To bring immediate change in your lives in the name of Jesus Christ the son of the living God. Lord God Almighty, I thank you that your people will arise in your glory and power. Lord, from out of the prostration and Lord God oppression that the enemy has kept them in and know that your love God paid the ultimate price and if you rise, oh God, if you are risen, God, yes God, we can rise above it, Lord because the same power that caused you to raise you from the dead, that you arose from the dead, Father, is on the inside of us. So today, Christ, we thank you. Holy Spirit, we thank you to breathe upon your people. Breathe that power. Breathe upon their life. Breathe upon our lives. Breathe upon this ministry. Breathe, Lord God. Breathe your favor. Breathe your performance. Breathe your success. Breathe your deliverance. Breathe your healing. Breathe your salvation. May that resurrected power bring to life every dormant thing in your life today. In the name of Jesus Christ, the Son of the living God. And Father, we thank you for hearing. And we thank you for answering in the mighty name of Jesus Christ, the son of the living God. And I want to release you with the anointing of Psalm 91, my family. As we personalize it today, we thank you, God, that as we dwell in the shelter of the Most High, we will remain secure and rest in the shadow of the Almighty, whose for no enemy can withstand. We will say of the Lord, is our refuge, our fortress, our God in whom we trust with great confidence and whom we rely. For the Lord will save us from the trap of the fowler and from the deadly pestilence. He will cover us and completely protect us with his pinions. And under his wings we will find refuge. His faithfulness is a shield and a wall to us. We will not be afraid of the terror of the night, nor of the earth that flies by day, nor of the pestilence that stark in darkness, nor of destruction, sudden death that lay waste at noon. There a thousand may fall at our side and ten thousand at our right hand, but danger will not come near us. We will only be spectators as we look on with our eyes and witness divine repayment of the wicked as we watch safety from the shelter of the most high because we have made the lord who is our refuge even the most high our dwelling place no evil will befall us nor any plague will come near our tent for he will command his angels in regard to us to protect and defend and guard us in all our ways of obedience and service they will lift us up in their hands so that we do not even strike our foot against a stone we will tread upon a lion and a cobra the young 
lion and the serpent, we will trample under our foot. Because you had set your love upon us, therefore you will save us. So we set us secure and high because we know your name. Have a confident trust and relies on you, knowing that you will never abandon us. No, never. We will call upon you and you'll answer us. You will be with us in trouble. You will rescue us and honor us with long life. You will satisfy us and let us see your salvation. May the Lord bless you. May the Lord keep you. May the Lord cause his face to shine upon you. Them found him miraculously and supernaturally. I pray today that as you go, you will enjoy the rest of your day. And as this week progress, you will experience the power of God. You will see God in your life this week as you have never seen him before. Have yourself a superb week and have great expectation in God. And my family, uh, we do have a ministry. You can join us tomorrow evening at Monday, uh, at no, tomorrow Monday at 9 p.m. We have a dial-in prayer line. If you need a personal prayer request, you can come on out. And be blessed. We, I'll pray for you. And as you all come in agreement, just to receive from God, uh, you can also join us on Wednesdays in prayer and fasting. This is how we navigate our lives, you know, in the word of God. Also, we are back here on YouTube on Wednesday evening at 9 p.m. where we pray for leaders and pray different prayer points. Love it to my sister. Join us on uh, Friday morning, unlocking the promises and prophecies of prophecies of God in our lives on a Friday morning. Come on out and receive from God. It's a full week. It's a full package. Bless you all. You can, if you, if you want to be a blessing to this ministry, you can do so also. You can do so also um, at Zell's uh, Allison Daily 02 at gmail.com. You can also do cash up. Uh, it's dollar sign here in heaven. Love you guys. Bless you. Have yourself a wonderful week. Bless you, our minister. I'm a bit. Bless you, Katie and Melish. Love you. Love you. Love you. Um, bless you, uh, Sister Tony. Bless you all today. Bless the Lord. I'm trying to see the names. Minister Tanisha, Joe. Bless you. Bless you, Joe. Aunt Anne Marie. Bless you. Bless you. Kozilisko. Bless you. Sister Trudy, bless you today. Thank you all for joining. Thank you all. Stacey and Gordon, bless you. Deep rejuvenation, bless you, bless you. Praise God. Bless you, Makeda. Bless you all. Thank you for joining. Praise be to God. We give God all the glory and all the praise and all the honor. Love you, my family. It's an honor to be here today. Shalom, shalom, shalom. Bless you. Enjoy the rest of your Sunday, your Easter Sunday. Don't eat too much. <laughs> shalom, shalom, shalom. Bless the Lord. Amen.